Okay, so today I'll be talking about algebraic features in uh, Mathematica version 12. So let me first show the web page that gives a summary of those features. We start with the main, main uh, wolfram.com web page. Click on Mathematica 12, a featured Mathematica 12 areas. We select algebra. And here is the summary of new feature, algebraic features in Mathematica 12. So here, are, here is the list of features. And then we have four rows of examples. The first row shows improvements in solving of equations and inequalities. The second row shows improvements in exact optimization. The third row shows the new feature that we have, which is manipulation of oh. equations and inequalities. Shows the new feature that we this have, is, which uh, is something that could be used in educational setting. And the fourth row talks about equational proofs. So, so we can now produce proofs of equational statements in Mathematica, and this, this is what the fourth row is about. So let me show a couple of examples here. For instance, from the first row, let's select this one. So this is, this talks about improvement in solving of large triangular polynomial systems. So a polynomial system is triangular. So if it's a system in n, n variables, means we have one polynomial in one variable, then another polynomial in two variables, then another polynomial in three variables, and so on. So for, for so solving such systems is reasonably simple, but they, they may have very many solutions that we have improved the time it takes to find all the solutions. So here is a timing chart. So we the experiment was working with dense polynomials of total degree seven with randomly generated integer coefficients and with varying number of variables. So we start, so for two variables, we improved timing of generating solutions by a factor of 5.9 compared to version 12. And you can see that we had 49 solutions generally for randomly generated polynomials of total degree seven, we can expect seven to the nth, where n is the number of variables of solutions. So for three variables, the improvement factor is 21.6, and we have 343 solutions. Then for four variables, we have factor of 54. For five variables, we have infinity, meaning the Com uh, both version 11 of Mathematica and Maple did not finish in one hour. So this was the time limit, and we got 16,000 solutions. And for six variables, we are able to produce 117,000 of exact solutions in less than 1,000 seconds. And the ch second chart shows the slightly modified experiment. Now we have a triangular system of equations and an additional condition. It can be arbitrary condition. Basically, it can be solved. The system can be solved by generating the finite number of solutions that we have for, for the equations and then checking whether the condition is true for each solution. But for, for this, of course, Mathematica has to recognize that, that part of the input is, is a triangular system and the, the other part can be treated as, as the additional condition. And here, the comparison is the improvement is even even better than in the first case. So basically, in all cases, the, the previous version of Mathematica was timing out. And here we are able to to find the solution up to up to six variables in under 1000 seconds. Note that this is the the scale is logarithmic. So, so the for, for two variables, we we are under 100 milliseconds. And so let me show another example here on the web page. So for instance, how do we derive quadratic formula using our new equation manipulation functionality? 
So we start with, with an arbitrary quadratic equation. We have new function that says multiply sides. So we multiply the sides of the equation by for a. We have to assume that a is not zero for it to be correct. Then we add the discriminant to both sides, factor both sides, apply square root to both sides of the equation, cancel the square root on the left-hand side, subtract b from both sides of the equation, and finally divide both sides of the equation by 2a, assuming that a is not zero, we can divide, and we get a solution. As you may see that we got one solution of, of the quadratic equation, and that's because we we use power expanding in this step, meaning we simplified square root of of something squared to the thing that's under the square, which the other solution would have been minus this. So that's that's why we only got one solution. And so for for each of these examples, we we have such list of inputs. Now, to I will show other examples by evaluating the inputs live. So I will use Mathematica instead of web page. So one of the improvements, important improvements in, in solving systems of equations inequalities, is that we can now compute topological properties of semi-algebraic sets of sets that are solutions of polynomial equations and inequalities. So for instance, if we start with such an inequality in two variables, we can compute its cylindrical decomposition. So cylindrical decomposition will give bounds on the first variable, then bounds on the second variable in terms of the first variable, and so on if there are more variables. You can also see here something new in Mathematica 12, namely the algebraic numbers. They are still represented by root objects, but they are shown as such iconized tiles that showing, showing the approximation of, of the root object. So we can see that the underlying, if, if we put the pointer on, on, on this icon, we can see the, algebra, the algebraic number as a root object. So the, the internal representation is still root of polynomial and the root number, but we, we see the printed part is an icon with approximation. So that makes it more readable, especially if the root objects were much larger. So now, now we can visualize, so, so this is a, an internal function that shows semi-algebraic regions, regions represented by cylindrical decomposition. And it's, I use it here because it also shows the boundary. So if the boundary is the same color as the, uh, the two-dimensional part here, it means that the boundary belongs to the set. So the region is consists of the light blue two-dimensional parts together with the, the dark blue boundaries. Now we can compute the boundary of, this, of the solution set. So this sec second cylindrical decomposition represents just the boundary. And indeed, if we visualize this cylindrical decomposition, we get just the boundary of the solution set. We can also compute connected components of the solution set. So in this case, we get, as the output is a list of cylindrical decomposition, each cylindrical decomposition represents one one of the components of, of this solution set. And we can visualize the result. You see we get the components separated. And so we can mark them with different colors. The set has, solution set has three connected components. Gives slightly more complicated example. So it's a five petal rows described by this inequality of degree six. We can compute its cylindrical decomposition. It's a bit large, so I'm not showing it, but I will show the plot of the solution set. So the plot, it's is a five petal rows. 
and you can see that this set is connected since the boundary belongs to the set it's a closed set and this middle point collects all the uh, connects all the petals so if we look at the length of components of this set there is just one component but now we can compute interior of the solution set plot it we can see the boundary is marked gray meaning it does not belong to to the set so the set consists of the interiors of the petals and now we can see that the set has five connected components each petal is a separate connected component and we can visualize this by plotting the components using different color for each one and we have five different components okay, so the next example now our equation of inequality solving functions can understand some vector input so we can specify that variable stands for vectors and we can use vector operations so for instance here we say that those two vectors are orthogonal they satisfy vector inequalities these are component wise inequalities so if you look at this picture if this is the vector x this is minus x so the vector y is supposed to be in this box given by x and minus x this this is what the vector inequality means and another constraint is that the norm of vector x is one and we are looking for an instance and see an instance returns vectors given uh, as lists of components and this picture actually shows the shows this this solution so the red vector is x blue is minus x green is y and we can use also the same type of input in solve and reduce for instance we declare here that x is a vector with two components x dot x is supposed to be less than equal nine and again vector inequality x is supposed to be less than x cube coordinate wise and here is the solution it it's written in terms of coordinates of the vector x so x1 and x2 and here is the, what the solution set looks like in coordinates x1 and x2 so there are some other improvements in equation inequality solvings so large triangular polynomial systems i have already shown that Diophantine equation with irrational coefficients. So we can have equations that we want to solve in integer solutions, in integer x, y, and z. But the coefficients may now be non-integer. They may be in irrational numbers, for instance. And here, another new thing, we have sets like positive integers and we have a nice representation as z greater than zero so this so we are solving in positive integers and here are the solutions so this is parameterized solution by parameter by an integer parameter and those are the integer solutions and here is a an equation slightly more complicated equation in four variables but this one only has two solutions now we can solve equations and inequalities involving transcendental functions so for instance here, here we have inequality gamma x of x less than equal to x and x is between minus 2 and 2 and we are looking for real solutions and this takes about half a minute to evaluate so i won't evaluate it here we get the answer it involves a 
root object representing the root of, of gamma of 2x minus gamma x with approximation about 0 0.67. And we got this warning message. So what, what does this warning message mean? So for special functions, we are to, to decide that we, we have got all the solutions. We have to count the number of solutions of the solutions inside the little rectangle in the complex plane co containing the interval from minus two to two here. So we are looking at solutions of 2x minus gamma of x inside the rectangle. So to, to count those solutions, we use numeric integration. So we integrate logarithmic derivative of the function divided by 2 pi i. And the result is supposed to be the number of roots minus the number of poles. And we know the poles of gamma. So we, we are able to count the number of roots. But we have to rely on the result of numeric integration to, to give the correct integer. So we are not relying too much on, on what the numeric approximation obtained by numeric integration is, namely it, if, it's, if it is able to tell between the small integers, it's, it's fine. So the first, first digit is, is, needs to be correct of the numeric approximation. So it's, it's, we almost completely pr proved that, the, that we've got correct number of solutions. And here's another example. So here we saw solve transcendental system that involves symbolic derivatives. So we get five solutions. Again, again we needed, needed numeric integration to, to show that the solution set is complete, to, to count the, the solutions. And each solution is now a root object involving a derivative of elliptic theta prime. So as you can see, the derivative does not, we don't have a closed form value for a derivative of elliptic theta prime. However, we are still able to, to find roots of this derivative, and here they are. And here is the visualization of, of the solution. So we, we are, have been looking for zeros of the derivative, so they, are, they correspond to extrema of the function. So this is the plot of elliptic theta prime. The next slide. Now we've got into improvements in exact optimization. So Mathematica 12 can deal with a wider number of exact optimization problems. For instance, it has been improved for periodic functions. Here we have a rather complicated function, which is a composition of periodic function, the sine plus two cosines, and this function. So this is a, actually, we get this function here and the same function multiplied by two plus one inside the cosine. So minimize is able to do the decomposition and use the periodicity to, to find the, the minimum. Here it is, it also uses the uses root objects that are nicely represented in this compact form. As you can see, the, the full form of, of this root is rather large. And if you visualize the solution, here is the minimum point, and here is the plot of, of the function. As you can see, the fu function is rather complicated. And here is another function. So it's a combination of periodic functions, but now with incommensurable periods. So rather than have the same function inside of of those of both periodic functions, we have one function is has square root of x, square root of two times x, the other has three x. So the, the periods are not commensurable, meaning the they are not rational multipli multiples of, of each other. Nevertheless the max value can can compute the, the maximum value of this function. 
and it takes a while. And as you can see in the, in the visualization here, we, th this is the plot of the function. The function never actually reaches the, the maximum value. It gets arbitrarily close to it. So the red line is the maximum value. And it's still computing. Eventually, we'll get there. <laughs> Okay, here is the maximum value. Again, it's rather complicated expression involving root objects, roots of transcendental functions. And another optimization problem, this time it's optimization over the integers. Again, we have periodic functions with incommensurable periods, so one is pi, pi times x, another is e times pi times x, so again, there are, there are not rational multiples of each other. And here's another one, so we have actually three, three incommensurable periods, and the mean value is cosine one divided by three, and here is the visualization. Again, so we, we take values at integer points. This, this points are the values, and we can see that all the values are above the, the mean value red line. Again, the, the minimum is never attained, but, but it gets, the values get arbitrarily closed. Okay. Now, vector and matrix optimization, just like equation and inequality solving functions, exact optimization functions can, can now also take vector input and vector operations. So here we minimize the norm of x minus y subject to constraints that y dot y is equal one, x dot y is equal zero, so x and y are orthogonal. Again, we have component-wise inequality uh, on vectors x and y and minus x. And here's declaration that x and y are vectors of dimension two. So here is the result, vectors x, vector y, and the minimum is square root of two. And here is the visualization. This is x, this is minus x. The vector y is orthogonal to x and is between minus x and, and x component-wise. And this minimizes the norm of x minus y. So the norm is the length of this green line here. Here we find the maximal eigenvalue of a, of a matrix and a corresponding eigenvector directly from from the definition of, of an eigenvalue. So this is the definition of an eigenvalue. We are looking for vector which is non-zero, and we say that it's a three, three by three vector. And here again, we get the solution for vector V and constant C, which is the eigenvalue. And this is the minimal eigenvalue. We can, of course, compute it with eigen system. Here are the eigenvalues. And we can see that, indeed, the, the maximum eigenvalue is, is this 14.8 root object. And here we use a matrix variable. So we minimize the determinant of a positive semi-definite 3 by 3 matrix with trace 1. So we mean maximize the determinant. Trace is supposed to be one. Here is the statement that A is positive semi-definite. And here is the statement that A is a matrix, is a three by three matrix, and here we got the matrix. Next example, so these are other improvements in exact optimization. So for instance, 
we can now optimize univariate elementary functions over the integers. So here is this exponential function and we find the minimum over the integers. And another function for which we find the maximum over positive integers. Some other problems involving transcendental function. I think this takes a long time, so I'll just show the solution. So we maximize composition of sine with a polynomial subtracted with polynomial. And here is the here is the solution. And this little red dot here represents the solution. So this is the plot of the function and this is the maximum. And we can optim solve optimization uh, problems involving deeply composed functions. So here we compose log with cosecants with exponential with sine with polynomial and we quite quickly get the solution and again this is the, the plot of this rather complicated function and here is the maximum. Okay, so now let me show some more example of solving linear equations by hand. So this is something that is aimed for K-12 students. So here is here is how we solve a system of linear equations by hand. So we have equation one and equation two. We multiply both sides of equation two by two, by the number two. Now we can subtract the equation and see that, that X should cancel, right? So we got an equation in Y. We divide by the leading coefficient and we have got the solution for Y. And to get the solution for x, we multiply both sides of the result here by minus 3. So we get minus 3y equals to 3. Now we can subtract it from the first equation to eliminate y. And now all we need to is to divide by the leading coefficient. So we divide sides and we get the solution for x. Here is an example of manipulation of inequalities. So we start with, with an inequality, linear inequality, with symbolic coefficients. We can subtract b from both sides. Now we can divide both sides by a, but now the result depends on the sign of a. So we automatically get a piecewise expression that says if a is positive, we get this inequality. If A is negative, we get a different inequality. And if A is zero, we cannot really divide, so, so we get the original inequality back. And we can now add something to side. So, so we add equation to both sides of inequality. This, this is allowed, so we, we get an inequality. This is that's implied by the original inequality and the equation. And we can add inequality to an inequality and Mathematica aut automatically knows that it needs to switch the order of, of the second inequality so that it's adding inequalities that point in the same direction and we get the resulting inequality. We also have function apply sides. So unlike the, the other equation manipulation functions, apply sides is purely structural. So, so it doesn't, in, in the previously, previous functions, the result was, was always implied by the input. Now it's just, we just apply structurally function to, to both sides of the equation. So we can apply exponential to equation or or logarithm, or we can apply sine to all equations inside the conditional expression, or apply symbolic f to inequalities in in a piecewise function. 
and it all works. Okay, so the last topic I will talk about is equational proofs in Boolean logic. So there is a new function, find equational proof that con can construct a proof of a theorem from a set, set of axioms, as long as, as this, these are axioms expressed in equational forms. And we have, Mathematica has some axiomatic, built-in axiomatic theories, so the, so this is the, these are the Boolean axioms, axiom of the Boolean algebra, here they are, so the, the and and or operators are defined by, by these axioms, and we can construct a proof of the following theorem in the Boolean algebra. So what we get back is a proof object that just just gives summary of, of this proof. It's 83 steps and here is the theorem. And we can then use this proof, proof object to show various aspects of the proof. For instance, this gives us the graph of the proof, so this dependence between different parts of the proof and each. So here is a substitution lemma number 14, and here's the lemma, and so on. So we could follow the proof this way, looking at, at the, those labels for, for each lemma. Or we can show the proof as data set. So again, here are the axioms, here is what they are. Here are some lemmas that we prove in while proving the theorem and, and so on. And it's, that's one lemmas one to ten out of eighty-three here. So we can we can go and, and look at the at all the lemmas. So that's that's rather large proof here. So here let me show a textual proof, textual form of a proof. So here we have axiom of group theory. So the, this represents the group operator. And the, the, this is the unit of the group, and this represents the negation in the group, the, the over bar. And now we would like to, so the group axioms just contain an axiom about the existence of the existence of the right hand side unit so now we want to prove that the right hand side unit is also a left hand side unit this is a theorem and we can prove this theorem using group theory axioms and again it's a theorem it has been proven in 11 step and we can look at the proof notebook so this is something that can be human readable so it shows, shows starts with the given axioms. We would like to show the hypothesis, and then we go on with the proof, with textual description of what happens in each step of the proof, what are the lemmas, how they are proved, and so on. So here is the whole proof of the fact that a Left hand side unit is a right hand side unit, or, or actually, right hand side unit is a left hand side unit. That's what the proof was. So, summary version 12 of Wolfram language extends already strong capabilities in algebraic computation with functionality for users ranging from pre college students to researchers. And I have shown several areas in which we can see the improvement. And this is the link to, to the web page that I already shown. So that's all I have today. Thank you for watching.